Welcome back to another episode of Exponential Africa, where we are in the city of gold, our hometown, Johannesburg, and we are fortunate enough to be sitting with Walter Dow, who is the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer at Deloitte, as well as the Singularity U South Africa faculty for exponential organizations, exponential leadership, and the future of work. And he's also a good friend. Walter, thanks so much for being on the show. Mick, it's great to be here with you and to be back in Joburg. So I wanted to start off by asking you, what is your current role at Deloitte and how are you helping these companies digitally transform? So Mick, I'm the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer for Deloitte across Africa and essentially I look after Deloitte's innovation and digital portfolios and ambitions uh, on the continent. Including, included in that is our, uh, our venturing uh, capabilities and essentially in, uh, assisting organizations to digitally transform is in, uh, taking them on the journey of business reimagination and there's a variety of phases that, that uh, I work with executives on from uh, educating the C-suite and helping them understand the importance of uh, digital transformation for the survival of their business right through to the implementation of the solutions and ultimately also considering the human factor of the digital transformation of that business. I mean, it's, it's so interesting. I think there's, we don't realize how many big organizations that there are that are currently working in an old-fashioned, analog, irrelevant way. Correct. There are many organizations that would refer to themselves as modern, uh, that are using technology and are using new ways of thinking to provide product and services, but they themselves have got a way to go in terms of digital transformation. And I think there's a realization that digital transformation is not a destination. I don't think we'll ever be finished. This is about constantly keeping up with the changes that are happening in the market. How our horizons, in terms of predicting what's going to happen uh, ahead, is, are becoming shorter and shorter. So we need agile organizations that can thrive in the moment, and then when there's changes in the market in terms of how consumers consume, uh, how we recruit resources into our business, how we develop new products and services, or even how we deliver those products and services, we've got to be quick enough and agile enough to change to adopt the most optimal format of doing business. So it's pretty much adapt or die. It certainly is about, uh, about relevance. And uh, we've moved into a world where we've got to become comfortable with being less accurate at predicting and becoming more comfortable at navigating through this constant change that we're in. Yeah, I mean, it's so exciting, uh, you know, that you're also part of the whole Singularity University faculty, and you're getting to create this massive impact around the globe by sharing some of your learnings around the future of work and how to be an exponential leader. What are some of the things that you've, you know, you, you know you've experienced by doing that? So, South Africa is a very, uh, it's a phenomenal country, right? We. We do such amazing things and we've got such amazing challenges. So uh, we do well as, we've done well as an economy in terms of globalizing businesses. We've got a phenomenal financial services sector. I mean, we've got a phenomenal constitution. We've got phenomenal leaders that have graced our, our country. Um, but we've also got phenomenal challenges. I mean, we, have, we now consider the world's most unequal uh, country. Uh, we've got a disproportionate amount of unemployed people to the size, uh, in, a, in accordance to the size of our economy. And so we've got to solve these problems. Uh, and in solving these problems, I think we put ourselves in the position to solve problems that have got global relevance. So the, the lessons that we certainly share uh, with uh, leaders in South Africa and, and around the world is finding that balance between ensuring that your organization is certainly globally competitive, but not forgetting that we've got to drive sustainability. And I'm not talking about climate or economic sustainability, I'm talking about social sustainability as well. So we've got to have healthy businesses, but we've also got to play a role in creating healthy societies and healthier economies. The future of successful job creation lies in what I term the micro-entrepreneur. And that's the entrepreneur that doesn't necessarily invent technology, but finds a way to leverage the technology to create economic sustainability. Um, and so we've got to create this environment uh, in South Africa and on the continent that uh, encourages entrepreneurship investment into these technology platforms, but also then uh, ensures that we create an environment where the micro-entrepreneur can sustain themselves. And that requires input from big business, it requires support from government, and it certainly requires the development of the entrepreneur themselves. And I mean, with the rise of all these exponential technologies and this changing of the future of work, people are all saying they're worried that, that the, the, the machines are gonna take all our jobs and there's gonna be this massive unemployment. Yes. And this has been the narrative that we've been hearing from some of the skeptics 
around South Africa that you know, a lot of jobs are going to be lost due to technology. What's your take on this? So that's a, a global debate, right? And, and I think what we need to do is we need to pause for a second. Uh, and I actually think we should pause just for a few seconds on this, on this point, right? So just like technology doesn't disrupt companies, uh, we've got to recognize what disrupt companies is a collection of negative attributes that can be eliminated by technology. So poor customer service, poor products, poor pricing, poor leadership, etc. that can be addressed by a technology solution. And the same applies to jobs. It's not technology on its own that is eliminating jobs. There are jobs that have got very many negative attributes. Low productivity, low efficiency, low, con low accuracy, poor you know, records of safety, or jobs that don't have much dignity. And through technology, we're going to be able to eliminate many of those jobs. Ultimately, the, the initial drive is going to be around uh, economic benefit, dignity, and safety. Um, so we are certainly going to see certain jobs disappearing, without a doubt. But we'll also see far more jobs being created. In actual fact, for every job that is lost, we will create 1.74 jobs. That's popular view. And, these, and some of these jobs uh, haven't been invented yet, right? But where I become very positive about this change is that these jobs create an economic velocity. In other words, um, through these jobs, we're going to drive more innovation, we drive more efficiency and productivity. And that puts more money into the economy, which drives prosperity. And that prosperity res res creates a secondary and tertiary impact on the economy, which in itself will create additional jobs. What we do need is to create an environment that allows for this change and f to, to be catalyzed so that we can reap the benefits. Um, trying to resist the change uh, will result in far more negative consequences. Um, this is a debate that's been going on for decades, for centuries. Uh, f uh, over this period of time, laborers have fought the machines that they believed were going to take their jobs away. And every single time, the laborers lost because the economics of the machine uh, won. Yes. Uh, the economics of the machines always win. And so we're facing that situation again where the capex of these exponential technologies is lower than the opex of the human. Um, so we can't resist it. It's gonna, this change is coming. I think what we need to do is prepare people prepare and prepare organizations for the transition so that we've got a structured uh, and orchestrated shift into this new way of working as opposed to reacting in a very panicked and frenzied way, which is what happens uh, if, uh, if we, we're, not, we're not doing these transitions properly. Yeah. So from a Deloitte perspective, partnering with Singularity University on a global scale and then partnering with us on a local level, why, why have you partnered with Singularity University? I think the synergies are very clear. You know, Deloitte places a tremendous amount of emphasis on innovation and digital, right? Uh, not only in terms of uh, services and products that we provide uh, our customers and clients, but also how we embrace it internally to ensure that our business is continuously improving. And so uh, the, the, the thinking, the, the on-the-edge thinking that Singularity brings with the ability to make it practical and re uh, real from a Deloitte perspective is, is a, a beautiful synergy, which brings a tremendous amount of value to sectors, to clients, to economies. Um, and so we, we felt that it was important that we bring this uh, to the continent, uh, to South Africa, and, and we make it available uh, to, to our business community as well as to our uh, government. Well, thanks so much. I mean, it's an honor and a privilege to be working with you guys, and uh, we're looking forward to making a real impact on the African continent. If you've enjoyed this show, make sure to like and subscribe to our page and look out for the next episode of Exponential Africa. Keep smiling.